Yesterday, Sieroji spoke about the fifth among the causes to make the five ruling factors sharp. And that is samade satcha nimeta gahena. So this speaks about samadhi. And samadhi is a word that is very familiar to most of us, but very few people understand in a precise way what samadhi means. And even people who have studied the, te- the text uh, can't speak easily about it uh, in, a, in a way that people can understand. And in fact, Sieroji himself studied the text and he knew the meaning of the text. But it was only after he practiced meditation that he understood what samadhi was all about. And this was due to the fact that he practiced under the guidance, overall guidance of Mahasi Sierra, and uh, who taught in accordance with the Buddha, with what the Buddha said, and explained in a practical way what the meaning of the text is when we practice. Samadhi means not to let the mind go free. And it's as, as the saying goes, Note at, every, note at every arising, always guard the mind. So one should always guard the mind with sati. In the body, whenever an observable object arises, then one works to observe it. One applies, applies art and effort and accurate aiming. And when sati arises, then the mind falls collectedly on that object. Whatever object, whatever object arises, when sati sticks to the object, then the mind becomes collected on that object. So when sati is there, the mind becomes collected. That means that it doesn't go anywhere else. It stays right there. And this is the characteristic of samadhi, that the mind is not scattered, but it, is, it, it doesn't scatter. So it also functions to keep the mind collected on the object. And this is called in Pali, sempendana rasa. Its function is to collect the mind. Kanika samadhi is what occurs on it's um, it occurs on whatever mind and matter rupa and nama uh, arise in the body when one observes then the mind sinks into that object so the mind this is the collectedness of mind on the momentary object so because it is because it is occurring on the object that occurs moment after moment, the nama and rupa that is really in our body, it is called kanika. And when this, when the mind is collected in this way, uh, both it doesn't scatter and it's collected on the object, then it's not, the mind doesn't move at all due to the agitation of anger, dosa. It doesn't move at all due to the agitation of raga, lust, or to any other mental uh, mental defilement. There's no shaking. So when our noting is going well, then the mind becomes quite calm. So this is due to the fact of it being undisturbed by raga, dosa, and so on. And this is how samadhi manifests 
in our mind. This is called akara. So it makes the mind peaceful. And the, what then one becomes, uh, there is joyous interest in the object, piti arises. And one feels, um, one feels happiness, sukha. So bec because of one's interest in the object, and this sukha is the nearest cause for the peaceful mind, for the mind to become peaceful. So each thing arises due to its own cause. And this samadhi, um, because it arises on what is really there, the nama and rupa really there in our body, it is called kanika. And the Buddha called it Kanika Chete Kagata. From time to time, the yogi's noting doesn't go well. Just like sometimes when we eat, it's not very tasty. Seems like the same thing again and again. And at those times, though, when we remember some really good food that we had, when, the, when was the food really tasty to us? And when we remember that, sometimes we can recover our um, zeal for eating. And it's, it's like that <clears throat> with noting. Sometimes our noting doesn't go well. We're noting, of course, but then sometimes the mind, we slip and miss the note, and then the mind scatters. So at that time, we have, to rem we, we have to remember how we established good samadhi in the past. And this is called <coughs> Nimetagaha. <coughs> this is called Nimeta Gaha. So to, this means that we should use again the method that we used in the past to gain good samadhi. So we have to remember well the way that we gained samadhi so that we can use this again when our practice isn't going well. Yesterday, Sirauji spoke about the kinds of samadhi. And the first, kanika samadhi. Second, ubhachara samadhi. Third, apana samadhi. Kanika samadhi occurs when one makes effort and aims in order to observe the true dhammas of nama and rupa which arise in one's body when they arise. One makes effort and aims and then there is sati. Therefore we can observe the object. And there's various types of objects. And whatever arises, because we observe it steadfastly, Sati sticks to the object and the mind becomes collected on that object. So that is samadhi. Some people think that samadhi only exists when we focus on one object again and again and again, the same object. This kind of samadhi takes as its object a concept. Here we are observing the mind and matter that really exist in our body as soon as they arise, applying ardent energy called atapa in Pali. And to the extent that, set, that energy is applied, this ardent effort, sati arises. And when sati sticks to the object, the mind doesn't run anywhere. So the mind becomes collected on the object. 
one instance of this collected mind is not much, but when you gather them together, one after another consecutively, they become very strong. And an analogy for this is that of a rope, a piece of rope that is made up of many strands of fiber that are wound together. And just if you take one individual strand, it's not very strong. But if you take uh, another strand and wind it around that so that you have two together or three together wound up, when you make uh, something that has many strands wound together, then the rope can become very strong. And this is the nature of how samadhi becomes strong. One puts our atten- we put our attention on the body, and whatever arises, we observe it when it arises, the dhamma that is really there. And some people, because they've read a bit here and there, you know, they have this idea that samadhi can only occur when one is focused on the same object for a long time. And this is how <clears throat> this is something that it poses a danger uh, to the practice of the Dhamma when people have this idea because um, this, is, this idea gets in the way of their being able to accept the practice. The Pali Seiroji recited was Sopi. That means Kanika Samadhi too. So not just Apana Samadhi, but Kanika Samadhi also. Chitang Nichalang Tapeti. Kanika Samadhi too can make the mind stable. That's what that means. And in what way? It is said, apito viya, just like absorption concentration, just like apana samadhi. So how does it happen? In the Pali, it said, patipekena anabibuto, that this, it's not overwhelmed by the opposing factors called the nivaranas. Wanting to see good things, hear good things, smell, taste, touch good things. Wanting better and better things. This is a disturbance to the bhavana mind. And this is one of the nivaranas. Sometimes the mind is angry, rotten, and so hateful, dissatisfied. And this also is a disturbance to the, to the mind, to the bhavana mind. The mind is sluggish. It's, it backs off. It doesn't want to do anything. This is the, the obstacle of tina meda, sloth and torpor. The mind becomes scattered for no reason at all. And being scattered, it goes to thoughts of the unwholesome things we did in the past. And one feels remorse. It goes to thoughts about wholesome things we didn't do. We regret. So these, this also is these also are obstacles. And then there's doubt. Is there really a Buddha? Did he really exist? Did he really teach this Dhamma? If we practice the Dhamma, will the mind become clean? And the doubts that one can dwell upon in one's mind are like building a ladder in, t- in the sky. There's nowhere, not, nothing firm on which it's placed. And this is vichikecha, skeptical doubt. 
For, so for those who don't practice bhavana, who don't practice development of the mind, these happen all the time, except for when one is asleep. And these are called the nivaranas. These are the dhammas which prevent wholesomeness of, of, of even the best kind. They prevent wholesomeness from occurring. And they weaken knowledge. It is said that the nivaranas are panya dubli karana. They weaken knowledge. The knowledge that is able to the, whole, the wholesome knowledge that is able to discern, discern between mind and matter, nama and rupa, that is able to see how they are related as cause and effect. The nivaranas, the obstacles to concentration, they weaken this knowledge. And in the world, this is very strong. This is happening many places. So Kanika Samadhi is not overwhelmed by the opposing factors of the Nivaranas. Patipekena Anabibudo. So it's free of the Nivaranas. And therefore it can make the mind stable the way Apana Samadhi can. Setang necha nechalang tapeti. So how does one make this happen? How does it happen that it is not overwhelmed? That the kanika samadhi is not overwhelmed? It said pavatamano. This kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, needs to flow like a river. One moment of samadhi following another after another and then it won't be overwhelmed where does the samadhi need to occur it is said aramane it has to occur on every new, newly arising object and how is nirantarang there can't be any gaps between one's, one moment of samadhi and the next. If one gazes or daydreams, in those moments there is a gap. So this is weakening, breaking, breaking one's samadhi. So it's said that the, the one has to have continuous nirantarang without a break. And in that way, although the objects are many, however, the Kanika Samadhi seems to be just one thing. And this is called Ekakarina. It occurs, it's, it seems to be just one thing, just the way when a river flows, it seems to be just one thing. The samadhi flows like a river and it seems to be as one. Not like many moments, it seems like one. So when it occurs like that, it won't be overwhelmed by the nivaranas. And why this is, is because effort, sati, and samadhi are blowing away the nivaranas. Virya, sati, and samadhi blow away the nivaranas. So one has to note, observe in this way so as to make the samadhi good. So when samadhi becomes good like that, then vipassana knowledge, beginning with the discernment of nama and rupa, mind and matter, and how they are related as cause and effect, Vipassana knowledge can become complete. And so what we are doing has this end. If we, can, if we practice accordingly, Vipassana knowledge will become complete. If we don't practice accordingly, Vipassana knowledge won't become complete. So if we want our practice to succeed, then to the extent that we are able to 
apply effort and accurate aim to observe the object so the sati arises to that extent the collected mind will occur the mind will be collected on the object and to the extent that the mind becomes collected then knowledge will arise and one will be able to see even very very small details first of all what one needs is the basic understanding that when one does something good it brings good results when one does something bad it brings bad results so for those who don't like to experience bad things and who want to have good things such people with this understanding will avoid doing the things that bring bad results and will undertake to do the things that bring good results just the way with when we with eating food with uh, the understanding of what is good for us and what isn't good for us when we avoid the foods that aren't that we're allergic to that are not suitable for us then we don't get the bad results associated with eating that food that is not agreeable for us and when we eat food that is good for us in a moderate amount then we get the results the good results that are connected with eating that good food so this understanding regarding our actions the ability to consider to weigh and reflect is very important if there is this basic understanding this basic mental attitude then faith will follow this is possible so following on faith there's the desire to avoid the things that are going to cause us trouble and to undertake the things that can bring about goodness for us but these don't happen without us doing anything one has to um one has to have no consideration for one's life or limb for one's body or life so only courageous people are able to practice in this way it's very important as soon as the object arises that one applies art and effort because if one doesn't apply effort to observe the object as soon as it arises then there will be no sati without sati there will be no samadhi without samadhi there will be no knowledge on the other hand if one can apply one's effort moment after moment so that the collected mind becomes continuous so that it seems just to be seamless like one single piece of fabric and then one can draw the conclusion this person is practicing respectfully and if one comes to the interviews on the other hand and has nothing to say time after time after time then it's evident either the the student does not know the practice doesn't um or uh doesn't doesn't know the benefits of the practice knows about the benefits of the practice but doesn't value them or knows about the benefits values them but doesn't have any desire to doesn't actually do the work to to achieve them so this is a practice which makes us truly human it make it gives us the ability to keep our mind and heart humane and although we're human with human intelligence it brings a better than average human intelligence so 
The teachers, therefore, have to explain and encourage in this way. Some are able to experience that the mind and matter in their body is very coarse and also it's very subtle. So it's what happens in our mind and body, what happens inside of us. It can either be extremely coarse, it can be extremely subtle and refined. So this, it is very, very profound. And because it is profound, it is hard to see. So can something that is profound like this become easy to see, become clear in our, in our mind's eye? And it is said that patipaka vidamanena supakatang bhaveya that when the nivaranas, the obstacles to concentration are blown away, when they are dispelled, then, so this is what we have to try to do. Similarly to the descrip- description of Kanika Samadhi, Patipekena Anhabi Bhutto, when it's not overwhelmed, you have to make the Kanika Samadhi not overwhelmed by the Nivaranas. So when one is able to get the upper hand over the Nivaranas, then no matter how uh, profound it is, no, va- no matter how subtle the object is, that no matter how profound what it, it is that is in one's body and mind, this will become evident in one's knowledge. Padipaka vidamanang pana samapati badan. So this says that the task of blowing out the nivaranas depends upon systematic practice. This will only happen when the practice is systematic. So we put the attention on the abdomen, and when the abdomen rises, we push the mind so that it will reach the object. This is systematic practice. And we aim so that the mind is focused accurately. So this is what is involved in samapatipati systematic practice and to the extent that one has accurate aim and applies effort then sati will stick to the object sati sticks and therefore the mind falls collectively on that object so the disturbing dhammas of the nivaranas have no chance to arise the power of virya, sati and samadhi blow away the nivaranas. They keep them they keep them from sticking to the mind. So this dispelling of the nivaranas depends upon systematic practice. Therefore one cannot do the practice carelessly. The yogis who have come here from abroad Some have practiced before in one way or another. But coming here, it's very important to do as the teachers here instruct. To do a bit of your old practice and a bit of this practice, try to combine them, that doesn't work. So if you use your old method of practice, then it's not going to be possible to employ, to use what is being instructed now, here. It's like when we have a piece of cloth. If we want to dye a piece of cloth, but that cloth has already been dyed another color, then 
If you put more dye on top of that, you won't get a true color. You won't get... So what you have to do, if you have a new piece of cloth, of course, it's quite easy to dye the cloth. But if you have an old one that's already been dyed and you want to get a, get a color uh, just like in the package, then you use dye remover first you, to get all the old dye out and then you can dye the cloth. So Sadoji here is teaching according to the teaching of the Buddha as instructed by the late most venerable Mahasi Sierra. And if you uh, have practiced other methods, so for example, if you are if you are similar to the cloth that has already been dyed, then you um, you have to remove the dye first before you try to apply the new color of this practice. You have to be careful about this. If you are going to practice here, then you need to follow this method exactly, not do some of one and some of another. And if you can't follow the instructions given here, then it's not going to make any difference to keep on practicing. So systematic practice, samapatipati, it is said that sa sadhama savanadhina, that this systematic practice depends upon listening to the Dhamma of the Buddha and other wise people. One has to listen to the correct method. One has to study this because listening to the correct the being able to practice this method is dependent, being able to practice systematically is dependent upon listening to this method. This word sadhama is a combination of two things. Sa refers to the Buddha and other good wise people. And dhamma, dhamma has a hidden meaning which is that it is something which has the power to raise one up, to keep one from falling down. Who is it that the Dhamma can raise up, can keep from falling down? It's the person who practices according to the instructions of the Dhamma. The Dhamma doesn't play favorites. If one, accord, if one practices according to the Dhamma, then that Dhamma elevates one. So it uplifts one so that one doesn't fall down, so that one's status is raised. And thus, in order to apply the practice systematically, to, do, to practice systematically, it is necessary to listen to this method. It practice is not, um, div- it's not, w- doesn't happen without listening to the method. It is said, tan satari cha dhamme cha pasarayatan. Tan refers to listening to this practice, which is for eliminating the defilements which have been following us throughout our lifetimes. Studying, learning the method, learning this correct method. It depends on two things. It depends on faith and trust, trust and confidence in the Buddha, Satari, and in the Dhamma, Dhammecha. Without faith, then one won't be able to work. So, in what do we need to have faith? It said satari in the Buddha, but if one doesn't believe in the person, at least in the Dhamma, Dhammecha, the Dhamma, that which bears 
the practitioner. So it's okay not to bow. One doesn't need to pay respects in that way to the individuals, to the teacher, to the Buddha. But one must respect the Dhamma. And when one considers, so if one considers the cause and effect relationships, that this is the Dhamma, the Dhamma is something which occurs uh, as cause and effect. And one should accept this. One should be able to accept this practical Dhamma, whether one, whether one accepts the Buddha as an individual or not. One should accept this, this Dhamma, which occurs as cause and effect, and have faith in this. So if one has faith in this too, then one can understand and come to have faith in the Buddha who taught the Dhamma. But without faith, then nothing will happen. So one has to examine oneself, examine yourself, and see. So as far as faith in the Buddha is concerned, leave that aside if that's not something you feel. But do you have faith in the practice of satipatthana? That in using this method, one can develop purity of mind and other benefits. So if one doesn't have faith in this, or if one doesn't have, uh, if one has faith, but one doesn't practice with respect for the practice, with care, trying to work continuously, then nothing will happen. So now, for yogis who have been here since the start of the practice, the start of the retreat, it's been one month, and knowledge should be arising by now. By now, the yogis should be enthusiastic about the practice. So if this is not happening for you, then it's because of either there's not respectful practice, not meticulous practice, not continuous. So one has to um, think about this. And if during the next month, then one continues and one, will, and one corrects oneself during the coming month, then there's hope. Then there's, then there's a good chance for progress. So Sirauji hopes that the yogis will understand and value the benefits of the practice and practice with respect, meticulous care, and continuity. <laughs> 